Good evening. Thank you for joining us for our regularly scheduled council meeting. It's Tuesday, August 13th at 7 p.m. Madam Clerk, if you'll call the roll. Charlie Davidson. Here. George Glover. Here. Ben Sosetta. Here. Charles Swinky. Here. Terry Osborne. Here. Troy Hill. Here. Brandy Bailey. Here. Jim Schrader. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. And uh, Councilman Schroeder did notify me that he's ill tonight, so wouldn't be here. So uh, we will move on. Uh, we'll start with our invocation. Pastor Farrell will lead, and our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, I will lead. <clears throat> if you'll please stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just uh, gathered here tonight with this uh, city council meeting, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to bless each and every person here that has a part of it, Lord, and the, and the time they spend and, and to the to develop this city and help it in many, many ways, Lord. And so, Lord, I just ask you to give them wisdom uh, and direction on what needs to be done here tonight, Lord, and just continue to bless them in the roles that they have, Lord, and, and bless this city. Lord, I pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. Okay, we'll start out with approval of the agenda, and I have an item to add as item 12A. I'm going to read the summary of it <clears throat> for council members. Uh, discuss and direct staff to submit a formal proposal to gift land and necessary infrastructure to USD 262 for construction of an elementary school within the city limits of Park City. Okay, Ben. Yeah, I'd make a motion to approve the agenda with item, with item 12A added. Thank you, Charlie. I'll second that. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion by Ben, seconded by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. I have no awards or presentations for tonight. Nobody signed up for public forum. And staff reports, Sean. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As far as an update on some current ongoing projects, the 2024 Street Rehabilitation Plan is currently out for bids with a bid opening scheduled for August 22nd. Plans include Broadway from 59th Street South to the city limits on the southern portion, as well as improvements to the Old Lawrence uh, Road connection. Secondly, we have water meter installers have begun installing the two inch water meters and larger, primarily serving commercial and industrial businesses. Installers will be giving notification to the businesses prior to shutting off water for the swap out and the length of the water being turned off should be, is typically minimal. Once they have completed the larger meters, they will circle back around and complete the remaining 600 residential meters left. The hydraulic water line extension and the 2024 sidewalk package is currently out for bids with a bid opening on August 21st. Staff is also working on a recently received proposal for specialty lighting on the 85th Street water tower. A selection committee has been formed to review the proposal before outlining the scope with the vendor. The final conversion of the main lift station was a success. Everything is up and running off the new pumps, the new variable frequency drives within the new building. Several members of our staff were trained on the new electrical components. And now that it's been completed, staff can work on removing the old components from the building from the old setup. As we all know, last Friday was a groundbreaking ceremony for Park Center. It was a great event and it was well publicized and highlighted the mixed use development that will feature both commercial and residential, as well as walkable open and green spaces. Phase one infrastructure will be completed later this fall, followed by phase two later in the spring of next year. And then finally, as a wholesale water customer for the city of Wichita, this past week, Park City implemented stage two watering restrictions due to the current water level of Lake Cheney. In the past couple of days, there has been some much needed rainfall, but even taking into consideration the 1.3 inches of rain that fell this morning, 
it's just considered a drop in the bucket as the lake remains approximately seven feet below normal. We appreciate the residents and their effort to help conserve. And if anyone would like any additional information, they can find it on the city's website under water conservation on the public works page. That's all I have, Mayor. Is there any idea of how long the water conservation plan will be? Currently, uh, they have uh, estimated that they're going to do it uh, reevaluate in two months' time period. Yeah. So we might get to start watering in November or December then. Yes, sir. Their plans are to continue this throughout the rest of the, the watering season for the summer. Okay. And I'm just curious why it's a hot button issue. Uh, we breaking ground on Park Center for the downtown area. Is there any plans for that to be uh, metered parking? Not at this time, sir. Thank you. Ben. Yeah. Um, on the water conservation thing, this is just something I've seen uh, from our suburb friends to the south in Wichita do is they've had some signs made uh, just con talking about the water conservation plan and and one they've done one that has like well water identification we're basically participating but we're well water so don't penalize us but but also some things of just advocacy or just awareness uh, could we look at something like that maybe in terms I mean <clears throat> we're talking 50 60 50 75 signs maybe to be able to purchase but yes sir happy to yes sir Anything else? Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Charlie. I move that we approve the consent agenda as it's printed. Randy. Okay. Terry, did you have something you want to say? You don't um, no, I, yeah, I just, I was not here at the last meeting, but, uh, you know, unless there's any, any uh, uh, big issues with anybody else on the, the meetings, I'll go ahead and, otherwise I'll abstain from the vote, but otherwise I will. Same. Yeah, very good. Uh, motion by Charlie, seconded by Brandy. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Aye. Aye. 502. With Ben and Terry abstaining? Yeah, I'd go ahead and make a motion here that we uh, approve resolution 12 16 2024 resolution approving the report from the city clerk identifying delinquent stormwater fees to be certified to the county clerk as assessments against the real related real property, all as provided for in Charter Ordinance number 37 2015. Thank you, Ben. Charlie? Second. Any further discussion on this item? Okay, motion by Ben, second by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. On to item 8, we'll hold a public hearing and consider approval of a resolution levying assessments for delinquent recycling and trash fees. Marlo. It says delinquent recycling and trash fees to properties, excluding any unpaid amounts that have been billed in the last 60 days. A list was of the proposed amounts to be assessed to properties was included in your packet. The statute requires holding a public hearing to hear any objections or protest letters will be also mailed to the property owners at least 10 days prior to the hearing date to notify them of the date, time, and place of the hearing. Letters providing notice of a public hearing were mailed to property owners on July 26, 2024, and they were given until August 13, 2024 to pay the delinquent amount to avoid assessment of the property. Again, this list was dwindled down to the one property. 1112 East 93rd Street, so. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'll open the public hearing at 711. Is there anybody present that would like to speak on this matter? Seeing no one, I'll ask again if anybody wants to speak on item six. It's a public hearing for special assessments for delinquent recycling and trash fee account. Seeing nobody, I'll close the hearing. It's 1912 or 712. I'm sorry. Now I'd entertain a motion. Troy. I move to approve resolutions 
1217-24, resolution approving the report from the city clerk identifying delinquent trash collections and recycling fees to be certified to the county clerk as assessments against the related uh, real property. All is provided in section 15606 of the city code and KSA 65-3410. Thank you, Charlie. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Motion by Troy, seconded by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Motion passes 7-0. On to item seven, consider approval of the 2025 land bank budget. Kansas statutes require that the governing body review and approve the land bank budget before it can be adopted by the land bank board of trustees. The total expenditure amount published was $321,391 as reflected on the notice provided to council during the July 23rd, 2024 budget work session. The land bank budget and notice of hearing are attached to the agenda item in your council packets. Staff recommends approval of the 2025 Park City, Kansas land bank budget in the amount of $321,391. Thank you, D. Charlie? Well, I move to approve the 2025 Park City, Kansas land bank budget in the amount of $321,391. Thank you, Charlie. Ben? Second. Any further discussion on the land bank? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. We'll briefly recess and convene as the land bank. The notice of budget hearing for the land bank was published in the Ark Valley News on July 25th, 2024, and also placed on the City of Park City's website. The total expenditure amount published was $321,391 as reflected on the notice of hearing provided to council during the July 23rd budget work session. And it is also attached to the agenda item in your council packets. Staff recommends holding a public hearing followed by adoption of the 2025 Park City, Kansas land bank budget in the amount of $321,391. If the budget is adopted tonight, please stop at Marlowe's desk on your way out um, to sign the certificate before you leave tonight. Thank you, D. I'll open the public hearing at 715. Is there anybody present in the audience that would like to speak on the 2025 land bank budget? Scott, you sure? <laughs> Brent? <laughs> sure? It's pretty exciting. <laughs> Going once? <laughs> All right, I'll ask again if anybody present would like to speak on the land bank budget for 2025. Okay, I will close the hearing at 716 with no one coming forward. I would entertain a motion. Charlie. I move to approve the adoption of the 2025 Park City, Kansas land bank budget in the amount of $321,391. Thank you, Troy. I second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. And that motion was by Charlie and seconded by Troy. Motion passes 7 0. We will now adjourn as the land bank and reconvene as the city council. Switch hats. On to item eight under new business. Discuss and consider approving a contract with Schaefer Architecture and for design and engineering of a city pool. Yes, sir. Attached as a contract with Schaefer Architects to design and engineer a city swimming pool. The new city swimming pool was identified as one of the top priorities by residents during the 1% sales local sales tax election. The contract covers structural, mechanical, and electrical engineering services throughout the schematic design, design development, construction documents, procurement, and construction phases for the project. It is unbudgeted to be paid out of the capital project funds. Staff recommends approval. 
But it doesn't sound like the live feed is back up. So, um, but you're saying really we're not going to have a presentation tonight anyway. We're that is correct. There was no presentation planned for tonight. It is strictly just approving the contract for the start of the engineer and design work. All right. Well, it's 723, so we're five minutes in. Uh, we'd already read the item that we're discussing here. Sean, I interrupted you while you were talking, I think, and uh, you were explaining to us what's going on. So is there I, any I will say that if council has any questions, we do have representatives from Shaper here just to answer questions if there were some from the council. So. Okay. Council? Ben? Yeah, so uh, I apologize. I wasn't at the May, uh, the May meeting part there, uh, where they reviewed the last concept and such for this. Um, could we get a general scope or idea of what type of project we're looking at with this plan? Good evening, uh, Robert Love, Schaefer Architecture. Uh, yes, to answer your question. Um, Generally, we're looking at a new outdoor pool facility. Um, we've talked about several different amenities that um, there's been an interest level through surveys um, and, and, and other just informational meetings um, that we've hosted. Um, so there's also associated pool house and, and other support spaces and amenities, mechanical space. Um, um, generally, associated parking and everything else uh, to support the new outdoor water park. Um, we're looking at, um, basically we, we did a survey and study and now we need to go into the design phase where we get into real specifics about what exact amenities, what the exact pool configuration will be and size and the siding and location, um, pinpoint the precise number of parking stalls and lay, lay all that information out more specifically. So. Initially, it was a study phase to kind of give you guys an idea of what was, what the appropriate size and scale of project for Park City would be with some uh, approximate budget numbers uh, so that we could get a, get a handle on approximate scale. And now, um, with your approval, we could proceed with formal design and engineering, um, and we'll go through more iterations of, of options and um, kind of fine-tune what that is um, compared to your budget. And general size, con conceptual conceptual size that you're thinking, or related to a dollar amount. Or, yeah, yeah. So what we what we had heard up to this point was that you know we would like to be in the range of an all-in project of around eight million. So that's construction, you know, all of the soft costs, fees, furnishing, anything anything else associated with the project. There'll be utility work and all. That's what we've heard to this point. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion on this item? Brandy. I don't have any, and I know it's been long awaited um, by the citizens, so I move to approve and authorize the mayor to execute a contract with Shaper Architecture for the design and engineering of a swimming pool to be paid out of the capital projects fund. You, Terry? Second. Any further discussion? Okay. Motion by Brandy, second by Terry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Move to item 9 discuss and consider approval of a bid from Meese Construction for the North Broadway Force Main and the 93rd Street lift station. Yes, sir. Construction of a force main along Broadway and a lift station at 93rd Street is needed to support future residential, commercial, and industrial growth on the east side, I should say west side of uh, Broadway, or east side of Broadway between 85th and 93rd Street. That is correct. Bid opening was conducted on August 1st with a total of two companies submitting bids. Mies Construction submitted the lowest bid of $955,575, which was well below the engineer's estimate of $1.439 million. Attached are copies of the bid tabulation and the Mies Construction contract. 
This is authorized, funded via temporary financing, followed by long-term general obligation bonds. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, I go ahead and make a motion to approve the bid tabulation and authorize the mayor to finalize and execute a contract with Mace Construction in the amount not to exceed $955,575 to be paid out of the capital projects fund. George Glover. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, motion by Ben, second by George Glover. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. Item 10, discuss and consider approval of a contract with FTC Equipment, LLC, for construction of the Grove Street lift station. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Attached is an agreement outlining the scope and fee for FTC Equipment, LLC, to provide construction for the Grove Street lift station replacement. Council gave authorization for the Grove Street lift station uh, replacement back on March 26th at an estimated total cost of $473, I'm sorry, $473,000. Um, as you may recall at the last council meeting, we'd approved a contract with Wilson and Company for approximately $11,000 for their engineering services associated with the, the project. And assuming there are no change orders, this project is now anticipated to be just under $134,000 instead of the $473,000. So we got some incredible pricing. Staff does recommend approval of a contract with FTC equipment for the construction of the Grove Lift Street Grove Street Lift Station at an amount not to exceed $122,974 to be paid from the Capital Project Fund. Thank you, Gina. Charlie. I don't have any questions. I move to approve and authorize the mayor to contract with FTC Equipment, LLC, in the amount not to exceed $122,974 for the Grove Street lift station to be paid from the Capital Project Fund. Thank you. Troy? Second. Thank you. Need no further discussion. Motion by Charlie, seconded by Troy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Item 11, discussion of KDEG lead and copper inventory requirements. Gina. In December of 2021, the EPA announced the final revisions to the National Primary Drinking Water Regulations. This required cities to inventory their water service lines on both the city side and the private side. Lead and copper inventory submissions must be submitted by October 16th of this year in an electronic format created and approved by KDHE. The service line, to give you some explanation, anything from the main branches off to a service line which is owned and maintained by the city, that runs into the meter. From the meter, the line continues on towards the home. Um, anything from the meter to the main is ours, anything from the meter to the home is the homeowner's responsibility, including any lines that might be on the inside. So the main, the main purpose of this initiative is to find potential sources of lead in the drinking water. Possi possible contamination is obvious in lead lines, but other materials can contribute to lead levels as well, as well. Other potential sources of lead are copper pipes that used lead solder back in the 80s, galvanized pipes which can collect the lead and then release it over time, and other water fixtures that may be located inside of the home. So city staff has been working for 18 months to collect information and compile an inventory. We've been using plumbing codes that existed throughout the different times of development, building permits and visual inspections. And in doing so, staff has been able to complete approximately 70% of the inventory. At some point, we realized the likelihood of being able to complete the remaining 30% by October 16th was low. So we reached out to KDHE, who assigned us with JEO Consulting. You might recognize that name from some of our stormwater um, improvement consultants. 
And so JEO is working with the city to compile the remaining inventory information at no cost to the city. So JEO was quickly brought up to speed on our progress and it begins scouring our documents to fill in as much information as possible before beginning a community survey initiative. For those private service lines where building permit information or other identifiable information does not exist, residents will be required to respond to a survey request. Initially, information will be distributed to promote a voluntary response, but at some point, the consultant will make physical contact to receive the results if no other response is received. We will have information available to assist residents in being able to identify the different types of materials for the pipes leading into and through the home. The identification of lead or possible lead contaminations will ultimately result in remediation in the future, but is not a part of this initial phase due in October. And staff is just simply requesting that you re receive and file. I stand for any questions you may have. I would ask for a motion to receive and file. Harley? So moved. Randy. Second. Do we have any <clears throat> questions of Gina? Thank you. Motion by Charlie, second by Brandy to receive and file this report. All in favor? Aye. Article 7 of the Code of the City of Park City, Kansas, pertaining to water conservation during drought conditions and repairing the prior version of said chapter and article. Doug. Like I'm being. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. I talk loud enough. Um, uh, this is our response to uh, the city of Wichita's uh, drought emergency stage two that was declared uh, about a week ago or so. Um, our existing water conservation ordinances uh, came up kind of short uh, under our, our contract with Wichita where we buy wholesale water, uh, some amount of wholesale water uh, in addition to what we get from the CCUA. Uh, the city of Park City is obligated to mirror uh, the requirements that Wichita has put in place at least come close to it. Uh, our existing ordinance really didn't do that. Um, so this is kind of a, uh, pulled the old ordinance out and gutted it and put in place this ordinance. It's me, I don't know. This essentially uh, mirrors what Wichita has in place. And so the high points of it is in stage two where Wichita is and hopefully as far as it ever goes, there are stages three and four. There really quite aggressive, and I'm not even going to talk about those. I don't think we'll get there. Um, uh, and I'm not aware that Wichita has been there in the past. Uh, in stage two, it's really regulations against outdoor watering, sprinkling, uh, uh, watering with a hose, and th those sorts of things. Uh, as in Wichita, we've divided the city up into quadrants. Uh, each quadrant is allowed to water uh, outside the hours of 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So in the evening or in the middle of the night if you have automatic sprinklers or if you're inclined to get up in the middle of the night and take your hose out and do it, that's when you have to do it. Uh, you can do it one day a week, Monday through Thursday, uh, no outdoor watering um, Friday through Sunday. Um, the, the, the important part here is, is that uh, uh, everybody gets a free bite of the apple. If you don't know the rules or if you thought you could get away with it, you're given a notice on your first violation and nothing happens other than the notice of violation. Subsequent violations are um, not going to go through municipal court, as you might expect. Uh, they aren't violations or misdemeanors in that way. Uh, they're administrative uh, uh, violations, and they're going to be uh, uh, enforced with fees that are added to the water bills. Uh, that's all I have, if you, unless there are questions. Uh, the ordinance, again, is pretty much a mirror of what Wichita has in place. Ben. Yeah, so the the ordinance is all new, basically. Yeah, if it's like you're familiar with the legislature, this is like a gut. And yeah, substitute. Per I, no redlining required on this one. It's just a new. I've taken the old one and just done away with it. 
and taking it and get, put new uh, headers and new uh, section numbers. And then enforcement is done basically, is this a p policing issue that they see them and that's how it's enforced or code enforcement or how? It's everybody. Uh, it, it, it can be anybody, but th there is a requirement because we're going to do an administrative fee of some amount of due process. So we're going to note the violation, take photographs, date stamp photographs, uh, keep a log so that we can make sure we know whether somebody's a first time offender, a second time, a third time offender. Um, and it could be either the police department, code enforcement, or public works employees. Okay, so it, it, it's city staff that's city -wide. controlling this. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? Okay. Is there a motion? Troy? I move to approve Ordinance 1196-2024, an ordinance amending <clears throat> Chapter 15, Article 7 of the Code of the City of Park City, Kansas, pertaining to water conservation during drought conditions and repealing the prior version of, of said chapter and article. Thank you. Charlie. Second. Okay. This will be a roll call vote. George Glover. Aye. Troy Hill. Aye. Ben Salcedo. Aye. Brandy Bailey. Aye. Charlie Davidson. Aye. Terry Osborne. Aye. Charles Swinky. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Need another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, uh, we're on to item 12. Uh, discuss, and, discuss and direct staff to submit a formal proposal to gift land and necessary infrastructure to USD 262 for construction of an elementary school within the city limits. Uh, I'll read, let me read it, or you want to do it? It's either or. A uh, little background on it is, as many of you know, uh, in May, Valley Center School District voters passed a 2024 bond initiative and are in the planning phases of constructing a new elementary school. Uh, at this point, no location has been completely decided on or announced. Uh, they are considering a, a location that's in Valley. Uh, Park City currently accounts for about 20% of USD 262's population um, for as far as student body and approximately 35% of their tax base. Uh, given this and based on previous direction, um, staff has conveyed an informal offer to gift the land and necessary infrastructure to build the new elementary school in the city limits of Park City. Uh, the school board has requested that we provide a written and formal proposal outlining the specific details of our offer by August 23rd. So in doing that, uh, Sean and I have discussed it at length and I feel like it's better to get it on the agenda and have the staff, or uh, I'm sorry, the council approve uh, that we could do this. Charlie. Yeah, I think I think it's a great idea. I think uh, we have a lot of kids, like you said, 20% attend the schools, our taxes go to the schools. I think it'd be great to have a school in the, in the city. So I, I make a motion that we uh, send a letter of a, how do you want me to say it? Are you, uh, I'll send you an uh, entertained motion. It's moved to direct staff to submit a formal proposal to USD 262 gifting land and necessary infrastructure to construct a new elementary school within the Park City limits. You want me to repeat all that? No, so moved. <laughs> Here you go. I'll give her a copy of it. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. Yep. And I'll second. <clears throat> okay. Any further discussion on this? All right. Motion by Charlie, seconded by Ben. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Move to item 13, executive session. Uh, we're gonna discuss matters pertaining to non-elected personnel with the entire governing body that's present tonight. Um, I would say 15 minutes, be plenty. <coughs> Brandy. I move to move to executive session for 15 minutes to discuss matters pertaining to non-elected or non-elected personnel 
with the governing body. Yeah. Uh, Charlie. Second. Motion by Brandy, seconded by Charlie to go in executive seven session for 15 minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7 0. It's 7 43. Okay, it's 8 02. We are back. And I think the last thing on our agenda is governing body remarks. Yes. So, Jim's not here tonight. So, Brandy? I don't have anything tonight. Um, I really don't have anything to add. I just, I'm super excited with the direction the city's going with all the new things, the park center and hopefully some new developments, pool. I'm just, I'm really excited to see what's coming. That's all I got. Thank you. Kind of follow along with that, uh, with Troy's excitement there. I was uh, gone traveling for almost a month. Um, I, you know, just got back recently, but I was really excited to see um, the Park Center, um, the, the advancement or where we were at with Park Center right now and uh, in, in Champ Town. I mean, it, that's, it was just exciting to see all that. So I, I look forward to the continued movement there. Very good. Charles? I um, want to congratulate the mayor on his uh, representing us at the groundbreakings, clear back from Champ Town to the uh, Park Center and the TV interviews that you've had to do. I thought it was, you know, done very well. And and uh, I uh, appreciate your doing that. Thank you. Ben. Yeah, just a reminder, uh, next weekend, the 24th and 25th, is the Frontiers in Flight Air Show at McConnell Air Force Base. Uh, Sean's, I'm sure, excited as his Blue Angels will be uh, out there that weekend at McConnell. And they have uh, some incredible acts that are going to be out there that week as well, just kind of keeping up to date on what all is happening uh, there. If you haven't followed it, you can go to Frontiers in Flight, I believe is their website, and see some of the things that are taking place next Saturday and Sunday. It's a free event to the public, so I'd encourage people to get out there, support our McConnell Air Force uh, men and women who are working to put this together as well as just enjoying a great air show. Um, and as part of that, I'll kind of segue in. I did not make the last meeting. Um, I was, had an opportunity to be in London to represent my work and also some of what we do here in Park City in terms of economic development at the Farnborough uh, Air Show. Uh, and there's some exciting things happening in our community that's going to be announced here soon, thanks to the work of Greater Wichita Partnership, as well as our friends uh, in the Wichita community, and then some of the stuff that's happening up here. I'm um, excited about some of the things that are that are taking place. And so, incredible opportunity, but a lot of good things coming out of that uh, time and that week in, in London as well. So, But it's good to be back home where we, uh, we love our preservatives. Thank you. George Glover? Yeah, I'm encouraged by the progression, the way Park City is moving forward with Park Center, Champ Town, and also the concept of the pool. That's, um, that's encouraging, it's exciting. I know for a lot of our citizens, they've been waiting for something for a long time, so I'm encouraged by that. And I just wanna thank everybody involved with that. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Charlie. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. Very good. I'll just say uh, new home permits, we're at 27 for the year. Last year, we were at 93 this time. Um, that's all I have. You guys have covered everything else. Ben. Make a motion. We adjourn. And Charlie. Second. By Ben. Second by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good night, Riker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have this thing. Are you keeping this hat? <laughs> I don't know. Ask Marlo. Are these we're off duty? Are these helmets?